This week on El Cara Ham Radio, we're going to continue our portable crossband repeater series, part two. We're going to also get into the antennas that we're looking to utilize with these portable crossband repeaters. Not only are we going to need 440 antennas, but we're also going to need two meter antennas. And we have to have a way to get them up into the air for use out in the field. That's what's coming up this week on El Cara Ham Radio. Well, it's time to get back together. At our club, we sometimes pull together what are called impromptu work days. These are work days that we don't normally have on our calendar, but we have other projects that we need to make some progress on. And as we saw in our introduction, crossband repeater portable kits are what we're putting together. We're planning to use these next year for an event that we've been doing for the last couple of years. These portable crossband repeater kits allow us to place these out in the field and then radio back to uh, net control. As you can see here, we have a couple of radios put together, uh, and AC4DM has mounted these onto uh, some particle board. We're also going to need power distribution, and another element that AC4DM has put together are the pieces, or most of the pieces we're going to need to put together the Anderson power pole distribution. Each of these portable kits will need several connections for the 12-volt power needed for the radios. There's a power distribution kit, and one like it is over here already, not quite mounted on the board, but placed so we can see how it might be laid out in the kit. And it's basically just a plastic box with those Anderson power poles affixed inside. You can also see that Bieno uh, lithium battery there in blue, and that's our proof of concept battery. We're not sure if that's going to be enough yet. In addition... AC4DM got out one of his portable masks. This is a fiberglass mask, and we were thinking about how we wanted to mount the 440 antenna and the 2-meter antenna. Out in the field, the racers use 2 meters, but to, we need to get the signal all the way back to net control, and 440 does a, a really good job of doing so, but they need to be oriented, of course, in different directions. So again, just a proof of concept of how we could potentially mount these antennas. There will be two coax cables coming down this pole, or one like it, and then these uh, the coax will go in to the portable kit, to the back of the radios, one for 440 and one for 2 meters. So this was just an idea that AC4DM wanted to try out, how to mount these antennas, and that's kind of height that we might uh, be able to get. Now, we've been using a different type of uh, drive-on mast uh, antenna setup, and we may still use that, but this is what we had on hand at the moment. Now, we're going to need several 2-meter antennas and 440 antennas. This is some stock that AC4DM had on hand. He had purchased this many years ago for some other projects. And as you can see, it's about 1 inch, maybe a little bit more of uh, this square uh, tubing. And what you can do is you can actually mount the aluminum elements for the antenna on, the, uh, on that uh, square stock. And so uh, one of our club members here, Howard, is showing some of that aluminum stock that he also has on hand. But to actually use as the driving element, we're going to need copper uh, stock. And this is showing one of those driving elements that he had previously, previously made. Looks black there, but in reality, that is copper. Now, to put these antennas together, we're going to need instructions, and we need to know how to build the driving element and its length so that we can solder onto for the uh, coax connectivity, but we also need to know how the individual elements will have to drill holes in that square stock and then space out those aluminum elements. So we'll have mostly aluminum elements in the square stock and then that copper driving element. You can see one that's built here, and you can see the co copper element, which is your driving element, with the reflector behind it. Each one of those aluminum rods is spaced exactly for the frequency that you want to use for, so either 2 meters or 440. 
So that's what we have to build several of for each band. I'm always amazed at AC4DM's knowledge base. He's got binders and binders of kits, uh, repeaters, how to build them. And this was some paperwork that he put together again many years ago. Uh, and uh, you could probably Google this, some really cheap antennas. And uh, that's what we're going to use to help build out the antennas probably in the next video. Now, we had already gone ahead and mounted some of the equipment we're going to need in each of the portable kits. And so what we wanted to do is test out our distribution uh, box here. Uh, we have the 12-volt uh, battery there in blue. And we need to start testing out the radios to see how much power that they're actually going to consume. We'll have to do some pretty extensive testing because during the rally that we use these portable kits in, uh, they get the duty cycle for these is pretty high for about two to four hours. So we're going to have to do some uh, testing. But this was just some initial testing to see how much power is being drawn. And the other thing we're hoping is that with the Yagi antennas, we can use less power. And the battery that we might end up using wouldn't necessarily have to be very large. You can see here it's at 13.7 volts, fully charged, before we start utilizing the radios. The radios are set up to where you can press P1 and you can adjust the power output for each radio. So we're putting these on low 1. There's a low 1, a low 2, and a high. We're hoping we can use low 1. So if we start to communicate on these radios on low 1, how much power is it going to draw? That's so coming out of the two over here. So I'm, I'm on. So we've got uh, an HT here on one frequency. It looks like we're looking at uh, 440 there, uh, which will then cross span to the two meter. We have a special cable connecting the two radios together uh, so that we can do the cross banding. If you come in on two meters, it goes out 440, and if it comes in 440, it goes out two meters. So it's going down now you can see how much power we're drawing when we're actually communicating. So it's not 13.7 anymore. We're already down to 13.0 at times. If we release the key, we're at 13.3. KY4CKP is moving over to the 2-meter repeater that we're just testing against. That microphone's giving me a little, hell, a little trouble. So we're communicating on two meters at this point, and we're seeing if it cross bands correctly back to the HT. And we're, again, just testing things at this point to make sure that it is cross banding. And it was. We just had to make a couple of adjustments on the radios. We know it keys up there. But again, one of the things we were looking for is how much power is actually being consumed when the radios are actually being keyed up. Keep in mind, both radios are powered on, and when you're cross banding, you're receiving on one and transmitting on the other. Because that's a simplex frequency. It's, it's not even transmitting the code. That's why you're not oh. receiving one. Right. We can turn that off on this radio. That's so now we can see we're at 13.3. So that's probably what I would call the standing voltage just, for this yeah, battery. This when you fully charge them up, supply. they'll show 13.7. But uh, we had used it just a smidge. And so it's back to it's about 13.3. We're not communicating on these radios at this moment. But we're going to, again, run some testing uh, on low one. Well, we've done some testing on low one, which we just saw, and we're about to go to high power and see how much power is being used when the radios are set to high. Chris is going to get on the two meter radio, and then we're going to uh, run just a couple of mic tests here to see how much power is being used. You got to get some some FaceTime, some camera time. And we're looking, and we're using two HTs now. So you can see the green means that that HT on 440 is coming up. We're utilizing some power. Not a whole lot, but we're using a little bit of power there, dropping down to 13.1. And we're on high power during this test, going from a 2-meter HT to the 440 HT. And this testing is going to be necessary. Ultimately, we're going to have to communicate a lot more and see how much of a battery drain over a certain period of time. The great thing about lithium is they stay pretty much full power all the way to the very end when they run out of juice. But uh, until we do some more duty cycle testing, we won't know ultimately how much uh, how long one of these batteries will last. And we need the power source to last, again, somewhere between two and four hours. 
So we're still having some fun. We still have to mount all of this into the portable case, and uh, that will be coming up in another video. Plus, we actually have to build the antennas, and we need a special cable to connect the radios, and that will also be in the next video. For the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, I'm KY4BDP. Stay tuned for Part 3 as we get into additional building of these crossband repeater kits. We have to build seven of these. 73, everybody.